book of uh, Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 14. Thank God for what he's doing. God's still working. God's still answering prayer. God's still meeting needs. And glory be to God for it. I say again today, good to see the good number uh, that we have in service today. Thank God for every one of you being here uh, in the service. And uh, I rejoice in it. I want to say this before we begin our message today. I want us to remember Brother Simmett Bankston in prayer that whose father passed away. The funeral service will be at 2 o'clock this afternoon. And I intend to go to the funeral. And I say this uh, for, that, for this reason. Some folk told me this week that I've been preaching too long. Well, I'm going to preach a little shorter today. And I want to tell you why. Because I'm going to the funeral. I said to the folk that said that, not because the message is too long, but their religion is too short, Brother McDaniel. Uh, but uh, today we try to get out on time because I have to go to funeral service there at Hammond. And what I'd like to have done today was just made up for lost time and just preached about two, maybe till after the Super Bowl was over. <laughs> but I took a little survey. Nobody beyond middle ways of the church forward thought the messages was too long. It was, it was those that sat nearer to the back. Kind of on the right hand side. <laughs> All right, y'all ready to go? All right, 1414 14, in the book of Proverbs. The backslider in his heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. And I want to speak to you today uh, on the subject of a backslider in heart. And look at what a backslider is, the cause of backsliding, and the remedy for backsliding. And either one thing or the other today, there's basically three classes of people in this service. There are those who are lost who have never been to the fountain of redemption. They're in their sins. They do not know what it is to be redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. They've never had the burden rolled away. They've never known what it is for Jesus Christ to cleanse them. To be cleansed and be forgiven of their sins. And to get up and say that I'm clean, I'm forgiven. I've been cleansed by the greatest cleanser in all the world, the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing in the world can cleanse our sins, save the blood of Jesus. But there are those here that's never, never been saved, never been born again. <clears throat> you do not know what it is to have a hope in the future. You do not know what it is to have peace whenever you think about death. Because you've never met the Prince of Peace. You do not know what it is to be able to lay down at night. And as though have Jesus to draw the curtains by your bedside. And speak to your heart. And to give you comfort. You've never been saved by the grace of God. Now it ought to be sufficient just say you've never been saved. Because if you've never been saved, you've never been saved by God's grace. Anybody that's ever been saved, been saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. But there are those in this service today that have never been born again. It's a tragedy of all tragedies. You know one of the greatest tragedies in the world is for a person to come to the very door of heaven and walk away without Christ. It's a tragedy for the heathens to be lost that's never heard the gospel. It's a tragedy for those in pagan lands that's never one time heard the songs of Zion or heard a gospel preacher preach the message of Jesus Christ. But I'll tell you what's even a greater tragedy. A greater tragedy is for those that go and come from the house of God. And then go, the word of God said in the book of Ezekiel, I believe it is, go from the very pews of the church to the region of the damned, standing at the very door of heaven. And hearing and hearing again and again the voice of Jesus Christ and the blessed invitation. Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I shall give you rest. Then in that category of people there may be those who are members of the church. 
You've been church but never been changed. Been baptized but never been born again. You have struggled, you have tried, you have labored, but somehow or another you have never been able to attain because it's not in our attainment, folk. It's a grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that's bestowed upon sinners. It's not a matter of attaining. It's a matter of surrendering to the Lordship of King Jesus and coming in submission to him. My, what a Sunday school lesson Brother Danny taught this morning when he was talking about salvation and discipleship. He said, in the church of the living God, we have a tendency to want to make discipleship one thing and salvation another thing. When folk get saved, we're going to say now, we're going to give them a course on discipleship. But ladies and gentlemen, discipleship is salvation, as he so eloquently said. Salvation is when a person comes and submits to the Lordship of King Jesus. And whenever he does that, he exchanges masters. Jesus becomes Lord of his life. He comes to the end of himself and he surrenders to the Lordship of King Jesus. And then he can say, it's no longer I, but it's Christ that lives within me. And then there are those who have been saved by the grace of God. You met him. Thank God for it. And you know, as we talk about being saved by God's grace and being cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, I'll guarantee you if you are saved, your man right now in this service goes back to that stormy day or that stormy night when Jesus took you in. It goes back to the time when he took you by the hand and took you aboard the old ship of Zion. And you remember how precious Jesus was to your life. And you could say, he is so precious to me. Other folk can talk about what Jesus is and what he means to them. But you are like the Apostle Paul. You say, to me, he is precious. Glory be to God for it. And then being born to the Spirit of God, you begin to walk in the Holy Ghost. What if God said that if we are born to you, that we are to walk in the newness of life? I'm glad, thank God, that Salvation is instant as far as our relationship to God, Father, and Son relationship. As far as our destination, it's instant. There is instant purity, but there's not instant maturity. And then you begin your walk in the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are those this morning in this service that are walking in the Holy Ghost. There is the lost, the unregenerate, and then there is the saints of God that's walking in the spirit of Jesus Christ who are spirit-filled believers, who are spiritually minded. They have the mind of Christ. They, one chief desire is to please him and let him have his way. They'd rather do anything in the world than to grieve the Holy Ghost. They're sensitive to him, and as they walk in the spirit, there is the awareness of the presence of God. And my friend, as a result of it, there is a sensitivity to sin. Whenever you sin, you know it. You are aware of it. Whenever you sin, you know that you have not only grieved God, but you have grieved with inwardly. That's a spirit-filled man. Let me ask you a question. How can you know that you're spirit-filled this morning? By one way, does sin constantly grieve you to the extent that you can't live in it? And we walk in the Spirit. And then there is another category of people. There are those that are begin, there are those that have been saved by the grace of God. You begin to walk in the Holy Spirit. Oh, it was so, so wonderful. Remember how wonderful it was when you got saved? And I'll tell you, he was so precious to you. Everybody you met, you told him about, you told him about Christ. Whenever you got saved, you couldn't tell enough folk that you got born again. You couldn't tell enough folk that Jesus had changed your life. 
and your mind went out to those that wasn't saved and that those that needed to be saved and all the excitement of telling them about Jesus Christ. Word of God became alive to you and oh, it was so precious. You picked up that book that was dead to you for years and you began to read it and the Holy Spirit began to quicken it to your heart and the written Word of God became the living Word of God to you and it began to live in you and it meant so much to you. You remembered whenever you came to the house of God, what a joy it was. Oh, hallelujah. There nothing like coming to the services of the Lord Jesus Christ. You couldn't hardly wait from Sunday morning to Sunday night, from Sunday night to Wednesday night. And I'll tell you, that wasn't enough. You'd find out where meetings were going on and you'd attend every revival meeting you could go to, a Bible conference or anything else because Jesus was precious to you. The Word of God was preeminent. It seemed like that nothing satisfied you like the Lord Jesus and the Word of God. Just nothing else held a real attraction to you. Was it ever like that in your life? I mean, was he ever precious to you? Was he ever real to you? Did the, the, the service and the worship of the Lord Jesus to you, was it ever, I'll tell you, the thing that you look forward to all week? Say, well, it never was exactly like that for me. You know, I, I, I got saved, but I never cared nothing about church. I got saved, but the Word of God never meant anything to me. I got saved, preaching never meant anything to me. I got news for you, neighbor. You didn't get saved. Right. You may have joined the church. You may have been baptized, but you didn't get born again. You can't get born again. You can't get saved. Jesus become your Lord unless this book and the author of it becomes precious to your soul. Worship becomes precious to you. Prayer becomes precious to you. I'll tell you, souls become precious to you because your love for souls is determined by your love for Jesus Christ. You lose your love for Christ, you lose your love for souls. I tell you, whenever you fall in love with Jesus, you know the first thing you'll do is fall in love with sinners. Am I telling you the truth? And this morning you think about whenever Christ saved you and cleansed you of your sins and made you a new creation in Christ Jesus and all, oh, he was so precious to you and to your life. There is that type person who's still living in that attitude toward God. That is a spirit-filled believer. And then there is another category. And that is a man who was saved by the grace of God, who began to walk in the Holy Spirit. Jesus was precious. The Word of God was precious. He loved Christ. He loved worship. I tell you, he loved the songs of Zion. He loved to pray. The things of the Spirit was precious to him. But somehow or another, something happened in his life. It could have been gradual, it could have been progressively, it could have been, I'll tell you, just instantly he willfully and deliberately sinned against God and he refused to repent and he lost that joy of salvation. Not joy, not salvation, but he lost the joy of salvation and he became a backslider. Now, ladies and gentlemen, no backslider enjoys the joy of salvation. You may be happy once in a while, but you have lost the joy of salvation because the joy of salvation is the joy of the presence of the living God in your life. And that's why the Word of God says that we can rejoice always if our rejoicing is in Him. So as a result of it, you become a backslidden saint of God. What is a backslider? A backslider is a person who ceases to walk in the Spirit and begins to walk in the flesh. Galatians, the fifth chapter says, if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians 5, 16. If you walk in the Spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, if you walk in the Spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What's Galatians 5, 16 actually say? If you don't walk in the Spirit, you will fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, that's why the Scripture said that a backslider in heart is one that is filled with his own ways. Now, what is our own ways? It is the way 
of our fleshly Adamic nature. So what happens to a man when he backslides on God? Basically what happens, he's filled with his own ways because he ceases to walk in the Holy Ghost. And when he ceases to walk in the Holy Ghost, the old fleshly Adamic nature rises up and takes over a man's life. And that man's life is not much different from what it was before he was ever saved. Now, but I want you to notice something. The Proverbs, uh, the, the Proverbs said, the backslider in his heart shall be filled with his own ways and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. Now, a backslider in heart. We was the other night having meal together with friends and one asked the question about external sins of the flesh. Could a man do this or do that and still be born again? And we talked about it and discussed it in the light of the Word of God. And most of the time when we think about a backslider, we'll think about that church member who came into the church and it apparently had such fervency and zeal and then later on he quits the church and maybe goes back into open and gross and scandalous sins. If he stayed there, he's never been saved. If he repented and got out of the hog pen and I'll tell you was grieved because of his sin and the chastening hand of God led him back to Calvary, just about say he's born again. But if it didn't, he wasn't. No way for him to be. But now, basically we think about backsliding, we think, well, I know somebody backslid. They're not in the church of the living God this morning. They're home and they ought to be at church. I know somebody backslid because they quit coming to church. I know somebody backslid. They quit singing in the choir. I know somebody backslid. They used to witness, but they don't witness anymore. Maybe true. But there may be those in this service this morning and those of us that are just as backslid in heart that's never missed a church service, that's never missed one paycheck paying your tithe on it. You attend every prayer meeting and why you even keep on witnessing and you'll keep on praying and you'll even study the Word of God. It's not changing you, but you'll read it because you don't want to act like a backslider. But the backslider in his heart and still be backslidden in your heart. Revelation 2.4, when Jesus was talking to the church, he said this to them. He said, I know your works. He said, you've done not well in a lot of things. You've been doctrinally sound. You've hated sin. You've hated the doctrines of the uh, heathens. But he said, I have something against you. And he said, that one thing I have against you is this. You have left your first love. Right? You know, I used to say they lost it. But they didn't lose it. They left it. It's one thing to leave something. It's another thing to lose something. If you lose something, you may not know when it happened. You may not know the world outside it. But if you left it, and you think long enough and think hard enough, you can remember where you left it. It's not lost. It's left. And basically, a backslider is one that has left their first Love. The left, that first love that you had for the Lord Jesus. Or you still go through the same routine of worship, but it doesn't mean to you what it used to mean. You still pray, but there's not that fervency. There's not that believing faith. There's not that expectancy from holy God as you pray for the living God to hear and for God to answer. You'll still read the Word of God, but 
Very seldom there's ever any more tears on the pages of it. As the Holy Ghost uses the Word of God, the Word of the Bible says that we are washed by the Word of God and as God begins to reveal your sins and to cleanse your heart, you no longer weep because that no longer happens. Oh, you read it to debate. You read it to discuss. You read it, you're afraid somebody asks you, do you study the Word of God? Do you have family devotion? And even before your own family, you would want them to know the very attitude of your heart toward holy God. But the truth of the matter, they probably know it already. A backslider in his heart. What am I saying to you? I can backslide and preach every Sunday. You can backslide and sing in the choir every Sunday. You can backslide and be in every church service every Sunday. You can backslide and pay tithes on every dime that you make. And you can be living a backslidden heart because you have left the first love that you had for Jesus Christ. Left it. I want to ask you this morning, have you left that love? Do you love him like he did whenever you was born again? Do you love him like you did whenever you met him? And I'll tell you, he meant so much to you and you were so sensitive to the fact that you'd been cleansed and that you'd been delivered and oh, you were so thankful to him because the burden was rolled away and that, that sin guilt and that burden and that yoke that was upon you, God rolled it away and oh, you stood so free in Jesus and you loved him because he first loved you. And you know what? As I've already said three times, worship was so precious. Thank God for it. Songs of Zion meant so much to you. Prayer. You couldn't come to church enough. Church service was never long enough for you. You got out of church, you didn't even want to go home after it was over with. Because I'll tell you why. God and his people and his worship meant more to you than anything else in all of the world. I remember times whenever revival services was over and we'd go to 10 o'clock. I'm talking about just regular church revivals and service. We'd turn around and drive another hour, hour and a half, and folks move the country all meet up and have a prime meeting, pray to 3 o'clock in the morning. You know why? Well, there wasn't nothing we'd rather do. Wasn't nothing meant anymore. Why, well, we'd rather get together in a prime meeting and pray and believe God. And the greatest excitement in all the world was to pray and believe God and live in the excitement of expecting God to do something. But you know what a backslider in heart is? A backslider in heart is one that can carry on with all the religious functions while their heart is a thousand miles from God. A backslider in heart is one that has all of the outward manifestation, but inwardly he's taken the sacrifice from the altar. A backsliding in heart is one who physically can pretend like everything's all right. But that commitment and that dedication that was made to King Jesus has been taken back. Because now you're filled with your own ways. Then you was filled with his ways. Then you was filled with his desires. Then you was filled with the Holy Spirit. And it was his leading. But now, all I said physically, you're going as you've gone on. But there's no leading of the Holy Spirit. Your conscience has become seared and there's no longer that still, small voice. I used to say, well, you know, if a man would let his conscience be his guide, that's true. If his conscience is educated to the Word of God and he's walking in the Holy Ghost. But you know, you can sear your conscience to where you cease to hear that still, small voice of God. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why whenever we walk in the Holy Ghost of God, that the Word of God says that we are to walk humbly before Christ and that we're to be still, as Brother Danny said this morning, before God, because I'm going to tell you something, God basically speaks in a still, small voice. 
because only those who want to hear are going to hear anyway. Studying this week, and I just asked the Lord the question. I said, God, why is it that you speak in that still, small voice? As the prophet said, that there's a voice behind me saying not to the right nor to the left. The still, small voice of God. And I said, God, why is it that your voice is so still and it's so small when you could thunder and the waters would run uphill and the mountains would tremble even if you just speak? But you know what the answer is? Is this. If a man's not walking in the Holy Spirit, desiring to do the will of God and to walk in the way of God, he will not hear the voice of God regardless of how loud God speaks. And if a man wants to hear the voice of God and he's listening to holy God, all that God has got to do through this book is just nudge your spirit and you say, yes, Lord. Am I telling you the truth? I've seen folk backslide on God and God take members of their family. But they didn't hear the voice of God. I've seen them afflicted. They didn't hear the voice of God. It would seem as though God was speaking in a thunder and in a storm and in a whirlwind. But they never heard God's voice. But when they come to the place of repentance and faith in Jesus Christ, I'll tell you what, when it comes to the place of crucifying the flesh with the lust and the affections thereof, and God begins to speak, they can hear that still, small voice of the Holy Ghost. You know, God don't have to speak loud for you to hear him. You just have to be willing to hear him when he does speak. Everyone, and I've made this statement before. Boy, I wish God write me a letter in regard to some things. I wouldn't read it if he did. You know why? He's already written one. I see his love letter to the saints. I say, boy, if God just write me a letter, I'd know what to do. No, God tell me what to do if I just listen to the still small voice. The reason why I'm wanting a letter written is because I'm not wanting to hear what I'm hearing. A backslider in heart is one that has ceased to walk in the Holy Spirit. And so as a result of it, when they cease to walk in the Holy Spirit, they lose sensitivity to the things of the Spirit and the things of God, and their religion is nothing but something mechanical. Now I'm going to tell you what's wrong with about half his church. Either you've never been born again or you're backslidden in heart because you have lost all the enthusiasm and the excitement about serving Jesus Christ. Probably half the crowd this morning grieved death because Super Bowl is on Sunday night. And you're going to have to make a decision whether you come to church or don't come to church. About half done made up a decision they're not going to come. The other half trying to figure out whether or not they're going to come and try to figure out whether or not they'll be home by halftime. Have you figured on that yet any? Just what time you get out and get home, just what part of the game you're going to miss? You know, I just use that as an illustration today because it's a good illustration, but I'm going to tell you something this morning. Anybody would rather stay home watch Super Bowl and had to worship God backslid or never been born again? Now the rest of you say amen. I still don't think everybody said amen. What about the rest of you? Am I telling you the truth? What are, you, know, you know what I'm really saying, folks? And I wish to God you could hear me this morning, and I'm using this as an illustration. It could have just as easily been anything else in the world. But I want you to hear what I'm saying. I'm saying this. Whenever you are backslid in heart, the things that entertain the flesh and satisfies the flesh is the thing that you're most interested in. I think that made me say it better than I said it last way. Right or wrong? If you're, backslid, if you're really saved and you're backsliding in heart, the evidence of your backsliding is the things of this world, this present world, this present evil world, satisfies you and draws away your interest more than the things of the Lord Jesus. 
Now, if that's the case this morning, you're backslidden in heart. Oh, you've never been saved. I'm not, if, this, it, uh, if it's a Super Bowl and it's a Super Bowl day, and I, I, I like to preach on things I'm talking about that's at hand. No, you talk about next New Year because Jesus may come before then. I don't like to be like the guy that's preaching a trial sermon in church. And some of the deacons called him aside. They really want him to come. And they said, now, you know, it's best not to preach on this because of the fact that we have some key folk in the church that are guilty of it, and they're not going to vote for you if you do. And the other one said, well, you you know, there are some folk too, they drink and so forth, so it's better not say anything about that because we really want you as pastor of our church. And got through the preacher, said you hadn't left me much to preach on. And they thought just a moment and said, I'll tell you what to do, preach a good message to the Jews, there's none of them here. And that's the way most folk want preaching to be, is that right or wrong? Y'all would give me permission to call names. It wouldn't take me so long to preach. <laughs> preach my sermon in half the time. But you know what the problem that, that would be? Is I judge outward manifestation while God's looking at the heart. Right or wrong. But a backslider is filled with his own ways. So let me ask you a question to decide whether or not you're a backslider. Are you filled with the ways of God? Are you filled with your own ways? You'll say, well, now, preacher, we're talking about the ways of the world. We're talking about wickedness. We're talking about vice. We're talking about crime. No, I'm talking about your own ways. I'm talking about just living your life in a casual way like you want to live it. If you're saved, that's what a backslider is. Backslidden in his own heart. A backslider in heart is filled with his own ways. You're just filled with your own desires. Your own want to's. And so therefore, Jesus doesn't have the attraction to you because the flesh is controlling you and that which draws you away and that which excites you is the things of the flesh. Right or wrong? If that's your state, you are backslidden in heart. Now, we will have to hurry up. What's the remedy for it? If you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What was the reason for it? Taking back your dedication and your commitment to God. And beginning a walk in the flesh, in your spirit. Beginning a walk in the flesh. I'm talking about the old Adamic nature. It taking over and beginning to rule and reign in your life. Or like I said, physical manifestation may be identical the same in your life. But down on the inside, you know that you don't love Jesus like you ought to this morning. You know that he doesn't excite you like he ought to excite you. He doesn't thrill you like he ought to thrill you. And therefore, you know that you're backslidden in heart. Things of Christ, as the world would say, doesn't turn you on like it used to. Gets the word they're bored and a burden to you. You understand what I'm saying? Then you're backslidden in heart. How'd you get that way? You got that way whenever you cease to walk in the Holy Spirit. Taking your commitment and your dedication from the altar. Little by little, gradual, gradually, gradually. See, when you first done it, you was miserable. More miserable than you are now because you've served your conscience now and learned to live with yourself. But you were so miserable. You had much higher goals in life than you do now. Your character was much more than it is now. And your thought life. But it may have been gradually. It may have been one step away from God. You know what generally happens when a person backslides? 
There's one issue, there's one sin that comes between them and God, and they refuse to repent of it. And the very moment that they become an issue between you and God, and you fail to repent of it, you're backslidden in heart. And you cease at that given moment to walk in the Holy Ghost. And when you cease to walk in the Holy Ghost, you immediately begin to be filled with your own ways. And to the first thing you know, it may be hit and miss for a while, but the first thing you know, you are totally filled with your own ways. See, the backslider in heart doesn't just walk after his own desires a portion of the time, but the Word of God said he's filled with his own ways. And you know what I'm convinced of? We're either filled with the Holy Ghost or we're filled with our own ways. One or the other. You say, preacher, well, you're just not leaving us that latitude to be ourselves that we want to be. When you be yourself, you be walking in the flesh. Right or wrong. There is no latitude. Adam, we are filled with our own ways and we'll be progressively, I'll tell you, the manifestation of that fullness. So you may be filled with your own ways, there's born to be no outward manifestation of it. But I'll tell you what, if you continue to walk in the flesh, it won't be long till there be outward manifestations of that. Right or wrong. And you may even get to the place that the church or the, uh, or the world can't tell you from a Christian from a lost person. Now, I'm going to tell you something. The consequences of backsliding is this. Now, I'm going to talk about that before I get back to repentance again. The consequences of backsliding is this. If you're a child of God, you cannot habitually live in sin. Sin can have no dominion over you. Didn't say you couldn't sin. But I'm going to say sin won't run you. Because greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. Right or wrong. Word of God said, for this purpose the Son of God came in the world that he might destroy the works of the devil. And the scripture said, whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son that he receives. God is our Father. And whenever we begin to backslide in our heart and we are filled with our own ways, our loving, compassionate, tender, heavenly Father will deal with us as a father would deal with a child because we are predestined to be conformed into the image and likeness of he who has called us unto salvation. We are predestined, but we are foreordained before we ever got here. God predestined us to be like Jesus. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be like, but we do know one thing in his appearing, we shall be like him. And ladies and gentlemen, if we are saved by the grace of God, we cannot habitually be filled with our own ways and walk after the flesh and satisfy the flesh and close the door to Jesus Christ in our life and not suffer the consequences of it. It's an absolute impossibility. Impossible. I tell you, impossible. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receives. 